storage. Uh, laser weapons are being used. Uh, this was a situation recently, uh, there was an attack with drones and the army was using uh, missiles to take them down and they said this is really stupid because we're using million dollar missiles to shoot down thousand dollar drones. And so uh, the next step is to use laser weapons which are much cheaper to fire. Of course the weapon itself costs ten million dollars to build but it doesn't cost much to shoot. So uh, a relatively low power 20 kilowatt laser beam I'm surprised that's enough, but they say that is enough to knock down a drone. And certainly we need anti-drone weapons, efficient anti-drone weapons. Drones are being used like crazy in war and I think uh, they're going to be incredibly effective, especially when they get smaller. So North Korean hackers have found misconfigured DMARC on servers. Now DMARC is one of several techniques to limit your ability to send spam. You can't send an email with a forged from address because it checks when it receives email. It notices the IP address it comes from and sees if that IP address is in fact authorized to send mail from that source. But the North Korean hackers have found uh, misconfigured DMARC servers that they can fool and therefore they can send you email with a forged from address and that's a very very powerful. In fact one of the top three attacks in the world by damage is business email compromise for exactly this reason. They hack into your email server and then they send emails that appear to come from real people at your company and tell them to send money places and almost anybody will fall for that. I mean how are you supposed to get anything done if you can't trust email that comes from your own company server? So Microsoft, now the latest version of ChatGPT has a trillion parameters, that's what I've heard. So Microsoft is trying to catch up or making their own, even though they're heavily invested in OpenAI, but they're making their own that's going to have half a trillion parameters. So uh, apparently it's out or it's close, MAI1. So uh, they'll be competing in the really, really big um, AI market. And uh, so apparently Jack Dorsky now hits blue sky. He started Twitter, then he became unhappy with Twitter, so he handed it off to Elon Musk saying he really trusted Elon Musk to do a good job running it and make it a benefit to the world, and then moved to blue sky, and then got fed up with Musk, and now he's quitting, abruptly quitting blue sky and saying they're no good either and people should go back to Twitter. So. Uh, Personally, I'm glad I dumped them all and went to Mastodon. I mean, deciding which oligarch you want to be under the control of is kind of for the birds. Anyway, however, the people on Twitter have a lot more followers and stuff, so if you're really trying to advertise your product and reach a lot of people, then you might want to be on Twitter. However, no large companies remain on Twitter. Almost all advertisers have left because uh, the whole point of Elon Musk is he's let all the Nazis back on. And they uh, about a few months ago, there was a study where they showed that uh, the big companies like uh, the big banks and the car manufacturers and stuff, their ads are appearing right next to Nazis and that's why they left Twitter. So there's no justification for any company to advertise on Twitter. What you advertise on is Facebook, which has more content moderation and you're not going to have your company be greatly embarrassed. Um, so this is an interesting issue. I hadn't thought of it. Um, Windows 11 encrypts the uh, hard drive by default or they're thinking about it and if you turn on encryption apparently the performance of your SSD goes down by half. Uh, I wonder why. I know iPhones have been encrypted since the 3S and it's the default on Macs for a long time to encrypt them. I think they must have solved this problem or else all the Macs are running only half as fast as they could which sounds pretty difficult but anyway that would be pretty typical for Microsoft. <coughs> Anyway, that's interesting. Uh, so the, it has come out due to an NPR result that a great many of the Republican judges are getting bribes just like Clarence Thomas, including Eileen Cannon in Florida. They get luxury trips and uh, invitations to conferences and everything just like uh, uh, Clarence Thomas on the Supreme Court does. And they're also like him, they're not reporting it even though they're legally required to report it. So uh, that helps explain stuff like this. Judge Cannon has been taking like two months or longer to make every decision in a Trump trial and now she's just indefinitely postponed it. So I mean she's it, she's been overruled twice by higher courts for making outrageously unjust decisions and now she has learned the way to avoid getting humiliated and I'm potentially uh, punished for making such extremely biased decisions. She just doesn't make decisions at all, just delays everything forever, which is working, which is what Trump wants. So um, it's 
very bad for our uh, vaunted rule of law over here. Anyway, so um, this is an interesting attack uh, that basically defeats all VPNs, and the thing that happens here is there is a DHCP option that you can lets you specify the default gateway. And so what these guys do is specify a well, option 121, they from the DHCP, they override routing rules to send VPN traffic through a local IP address that initiates the encrypted tunnel. Um, and what they can do is reroute the traffic through another port so your machine will connect outside the VPN. The VPN will be connected and it will tell you your VPN is connected and you'll see no problem, but the traffic is actually flowing outside the VPN, defeating the whole point. And your machine will typically not pop up any message to tell you that. Uh, they say one way to avoid this is to use a virtual machine in NAT mode, because then all the traffic, I think, goes through the, uh, the virtual NAT adapter and they can't reroute it. But it's an interesting issue. Uh, VPNs are pretty weak protection. I mean, you know, I've heard art read articles and I've done studies myself, something like 80% of VPNs perform DNS resolution outside the VPN. So a lot of information about what you're doing does leak outside VPNs. They're, they're a lot less secure than they seem to be at first glance. Let me just check for comments. Okay, hello. All right. Um, so there's a now new California bill to end self-checkout at stores claiming that what it does is it uh, causes a huge amount of theft. Uh, there have been a lot of reports of this. Um, I wonder if the stores are not currently being forced to do it. I would think they're saving money, but if people say in, in practice they don't save money, they have a bad customer experience, and there's a lot of theft. Uh, I'm not sure the government needs to outlaw them, but it seems to me like you could just leave it up to the stores to decide what they want to do. One of the large stores, Walgreens or Walmart, just said they're going to kill, cancel all the uh, self-checkouts because they've decided it's just not worth it and we're going to go back to the old system with real humans doing the checkout. I don't know why the government has to get involved, but they're trying to. Um, so the M4 is coming out which is not normal for Apple. It's going to undercut the M3, but uh, they're going to put the M3 chips in some of their other devices. So um, it's the next big step forward. Um, my M1 still seems plenty fast to me, but I'm sure the M4 is a whole lot faster. BetterHelp, I heard about this years ago. BetterHelp is the online therapy that you can get. And what they do is even if you tell them not to, they record what you say and they use it for advertising, they use it for target ads to you, try to sell you drugs and stuff. So it's uh, pretty appalling, and they're getting sued. Uh, this came out several years ago. Uh, and Robinhood is the app you put on your phone, and now you can trade cryptocurrency and stocks like a game on your phone. And it's apparently a lot of fun and very addictive for teenage men, young men. And a lot of them bet too much money in stocks that are too risky and end up hugely in debt. There was one famous case about two years ago where a kid committed suicide because the Robinhood app told him he was like $700,000 in debt. And um, they're trying to defend themselves by saying the Securities and Exchange Commission should not be able to punish them for not obeying the compliance regulations around cryptocurrency because the regulations about cryptocurrency are very confusing and contradictory and they can't figure out what to do. And that is, on the surface of it, a pretty good argument. And I've heard this a lot because it's very, the government has never made it clear whether cryptocurrency is a commodity or a security. And those are two very different legal things um, handled in different ways. However, I think it's fake because, the, as a matter of fact, the cryptocurrencies are carefully designed to avoid regulation. So they have carefully made the cryptocurrencies as confusing as possible so nobody can figure out what they are. And for uh, until maybe three or four years ago, they just weren't being, they were just evading taxes entirely. Uh, because nobody could figure out what they were or how they should be taxed. Anyway, uh, we'll see what comes of it, and the end result of this is probably there may be some more clarity about exactly what are the rules around cryptocurrency, how they should be regulated, and how they should be taxed. And here's one that uh, I just found out about. There's a uh, detailed story on Wired about the uh, solar winds attack, which is really important. I bring it up a lot in classes. I gave a up talk yesterday. Uh, the solar winds attack is what really made everybody understand the importance of supply chain attacks. And now, uh, one thing that's a big issue is every company has a uh, process to produce their software. And they have something like version control at GitHub or something. 
And uh, one big issue you need to do in your modern security checklist is secure your supply chain. Make sure that your stuff is being reviewed and checked and that you know what libraries are being used and so on. This is a big push now because of this attack. And this attack was lethal. Be put on the authorized update from the real manufacturer. It contained malware from Russia. Those machines are owned by Russia, who then put more malware on it. So they owned tons of important American companies, government and business, and they probably still own them because even though months later they figured it out and told everybody to update their solar winds, you don't know how much more damage was done by that time. And uh, I say, very possible that from 2019, um, many of these companies are still under control of the Russians. Um, it is, unfortunately, each company is responsible for their own incident response, and many of them will just not have the technical skill to really make their stuff completely clean again. They'll just clean off the obvious stuff and call it good enough and keep going. So, let me stop this.